OK, so you're very welcome along uh, to this information session on the Certificate in Applied Digital Marketing at TU Dublin Tala campus as part of the Department of Marketing and Business Computing, which of course is also a part of the uh, Springboard Initiative for 2022. So let me just start by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Dean Creevy. Um, I'm a lecturer in marketing in the Department of Marketing and Business Computing at TU Dublin Tala. Um, I help co-write uh, the BA in digital marketing from which this certificate is actually born from. So I'm very familiar with the program itself and I'm also a lecturer um, on several of the modules across the three slash four years um, of the BA degree. So I will be more than happy to give you a little bit of a tour um, around not only the technological university itself, but also around the programs virtually, of course, chatting through uh, some of the um, finer details of the program, running through the module list, uh, going through some information about the timetable. If you were to register uh, with us, what you could expect in terms of delivery and in terms of uh, content and things like that. So the agenda is I uh, shouldn't take more than sort of 20, 25 minutes or so. I'll start with a little brief bit of information just about TU Dublin, and then we'll go into more detail about the programmes and the timetable before rounding off uh, with some general FAQ, some of the most sort of common questions uh, that particularly in the last couple of years since the pandemic began have arisen in terms of you know, delivery of content in terms of assessments and all of that kind of thing. And then I'll stop the recording and then I will open the floor then to any questions uh, from the floor. So just to um, give you a very sort of brief overview of the Technological University Dublin, it was born out of the merger of three institutes of technology, that being IT Tala, IT Blanchardstown and Dublin Institute of Technology, DIT. Those three campuses all merged together to form one technological university, which was enacted in January, New Year's Day 2019, and became Ireland's first technological university, but of course not now, not the only uh, TU that we have uh, since the, um, the, the birth of the Munster Technological University at the beginning of this year. So where we are housed within the uh, Technological University is within the Tala campus and then specifically within the School of Business and Humanities. And then we are there in the Department of Marketing and Business Computing. So just to go through um, some sort of names and familiar faces that you will get to know um, should you be joining us in the coming academic year, our head of department, Adrian Payne would be uh, basically the head of everything that would happen within this department. So he will be the head across our suite of programs, uh, which includes not only the digital marketing cert, but also other degrees in marketing and advertising. And then at a more sort of a, a university level, we have on the left hand side here, Dr. Damien Roach, um, who is the uh, the head of the School of Business, so then he would be in charge of all of the departments within that School of Business. We have the campus principal, Thomas Stone, who oversees all operations in Tala campus. And then on the right hand side, we have Professor uh, David Fitzpatrick, who is the president of the Technological University Dublin. So he oversees everything and his offices are over in Grange Gorman in the, um, the brand new campus that you know, is continuously in development and constantly adding things. Um, which should be you know, well up and running very, very soon. So fantastic purpose-built campus out there on the north side of the city. OK, so that is just a very sort of brief overview um, about the TU. So specifically moving in to our own suite of programmes. So we have five programmes which run at night in the Department of Marketing. Those are at the very sort of top level, the full BA in Digital Marketing Technologies, which is a three slash four year degree. Uh, which was brand new, only launched a few years ago. And that encompasses basically the entirety of the spectrum of modules within the Department of Marketing. From that, we also have three smaller certificates. And the one highlighted in yellow is the one which we are going to discuss this evening, which is the Certificate in Applied Digital Marketing, which is a one year level seven minor award. 
So you might obviously notice the other two certificates, which are here in digital marketing and in social media marketing. And you notice that they are level six SPAs or special purpose awards. So the first question you might ask is what is the difference between them? And the most fundamental difference between them is not only level six versus level seven, but also the number of credits that are actually involved within those. So the one year springboard course that we have is a total of 60 credits, which is a full year of study. The other special purpose awards are only 30 credits, so they are half the amount of credits. So for the same amount of time spent studying one academic year, you will be accumulating 60 credits rather than 30. Now that does you know, incorporate more modules and there is more work involved. Uh, but to walk away, you know, after one semester or one academic year with the full minor award level seven, uh, the certificate, which is why we went with that one for the purposes of the springboard application. So let's go into a little bit more detail about the program itself. So the entire suite of programs in digital marketing uh, represent the school's newest programs, and they are a combination of both sort of conventional marketing theory with more specialized sort of digital elements, as well as developing more transferable skills throughout the entirety of all the modules. So we have very specifically chosen uh, series of modules throughout the cert in applied digital marketing for the express purposes of isolating some of those key skills not only within marketing but also within digital and then thirdly within the more sort of transferable space as well to engage students in a variety of different aspects of digital marketing within one cohesive academic year of study. So the main sort of idea behind developing these programs in digital marketing was sort of twofold through our industry links and through our sort of uh, links that we would have, you know, through um, sort of alumni or through, you know, um, sort of special guest lecturers that we will come in. We noticed a few years ago that there was, you know, there was basically two types of graduate which were actually emerging from what was IT Tala at the time and sort of generally, um, you know, not so much sort of specifically to our own campus. What they found was that graduates within sort of marketing were occupying either one of two categories. They were either coming in to industry with an awful lot of knowledge in marketing and of the theory and of all the sort of the, the those sort of more sort of theoretical elements of marketing, but yet perhaps lacked the sort of the digital skills in order to really sort of bring that to fruition within sort of contemporary marketing practice and sort of modern day industry. Or the flip side of that was actually true, that graduates were coming through with all of these sort of digital skills, but lacked the business acumen or specific sort of marketing know-how in order to actually bring those skills and apply them within a, a real sort of, you know, real life business sense. So that was where we sort of came up with the idea of trying to develop a program which kind of found and struck that balance and sort of addressed that gap. So Whereas you will encounter modules here which do focus on marketing theory and do, you know, sort of bring forth an awful lot of that sort of traditional perspectives of marketing. We always make sure that they are rooted within contemporary modern day digital technologies and modern day case studies as well. So it's it's not so much about forgetting the past as so much it is sort of kicking it, bringing it, kicking, dragging and screaming in, you know, to, to 2022 and making sure, you know, that any um, graduates of our programs, be it the, the special purpose awards, be it the level seven minor, be it the three year, the four year honors degree. Uh, we, you know, always strive to ensure that we are doing the absolute best we can to develop our students and give them, um, you know, that sort of platform that they can then build on within industry practice as well. Or, you know, should they uh, choose to go on to further study, postgraduate study and things like that. In terms of the modules themselves, they comprise of both 100% CA, continuous assessment modules and also some exam elements and now this there's no hard and fast rule about this your lecturers will advise you on which of the modules are 100 ca and which ones contain an exam so when they are 100 ca ca stands for continuous assessments and those as the name would imply assessments that are carried out on a continuous basis across semester 
So you might, for example, have, let's say, weekly assignments, which could be worth, let's say, 5% or 10% each, or you may have maybe, you know, a, a sort of a large group project, which could be worth 40 or 50% or things of that nature. In those exam modules, at the end of each semester, there will be an exam. The actual weighting of the exam can change module to module. Some exams could be worth 40%, some could be worth 60%. Again, there are no hard and fast rules about this, but you will be advised which modules carry which assessment weighting. They will be made abundantly clear at all stages. There will never be any sort of ambiguity regarding that. But just to make sure, you know, just to sort of take note that even if you are studying, let's say, six modules per semester, that does not mean that you will have six exams at the end of that semester. There may be a couple of 100% CA elements in there just to, I suppose, um, you know, ensure that there is sort of an accumulation of that sort of grading and that sort of work as you are moving through, rather than just sort of backloading everything to one bunch of big exams at the end of the semester. So the CERT itself is a year long program which blends together first, second and third year modules from the full BA program. All right. And again, your lecturers will always advise you of this. So, for example, in the coming semester, next week, for example, I am teaching both a first year module and a third year module on this certificate. Now, again, the content of both of those will be widely different, of course, but we do ensure that any of our springboard students coming in, we do understand that they are, while they're taking a third year module, they will be, you know, they won't be left behind. There won't be, a, you know, a, an element or an expectation, you know, that they will have already gained, you know, a series of familiarity with the concepts and the theories that are involved. Because, of course, you know, this is a one year program for certificate guys or, you know, even if you're on the SPA, for example. So we always ensure to keep that in mind uh, as we go through as well. And there will, of course, be supports there for our students outside of actual class time as well, should that be needed. And we can go into more detail about that afterwards. It also incorporates the Applied Industry Project module, which you will take in the second semester of study. And the Applied Industry Project module is not a module which has sort of fixed class times that you would, you know, actually take, you know, physical classes from six to eight or eight to ten, for example. It is a semester long project whereby everyone teams up with a live industry client and designs, develops, implements and actually runs a live digital marketing campaign for their clients. So the reason for this was that we wanted to ensure that there was an element of real industry application and industry engagement. So we didn't want to have a program which was just classroom based. We wanted to ensure that there was genuine outside industry engagement, again, in order to try and ensure that our graduates were going to have a physical sort of output element that they could then take with them after their graduation into industry or you know into consultancy or whatever sort of career path that they actually choose to go on so that's in semester two so who has studied this course is another sort of common question that always sort of comes up and one thing to be um Perfectly honest, you know, from a personal point of view, I've been very sort of pleasantly surprised that we've had such a wide variety of applications, you know, not only through Springboard, but also through our full sort of BA program. We've got individuals, you know, who have perhaps worked in the area of marketing or advertising for an awful long time and are looking to upskill on the digital side of things or else, you know, individuals who are looking for a complete sort of career change and are looking for something new. Uh, this course is developed for both of those individuals, all right, who may, you know, have a familiarity with some of the aspects of it, but are looking to upskill in certain areas, such as, let's say, graphic design or web design or something along those lines, or for those individuals who are trying, you know, this for the first time, or perhaps have, you know, never actually taken a college course before, and an awful lot of this, you know, is going to be new to them, not only in terms of the content, but also in terms of the mechanics and things like that. So it is you know, designed in a way to be accessible to everyone. There is no, you know, prerequisite in terms of qualifying criteria, you know, that we uh, showcase, you know, I know some courses would expect, you know, sort of uh, 
submission of a portfolio or evidence of previous work or something like that. That is not the case here. It is designed and delivered in such a way, you know, that it will be accessible to, like I say, both of those sort of categories of individuals. So here is the module list uh, for the course. Now, as you can see here, it is made up of two semesters over the course of one academic year. You will see I've added just a couple of little amendments and I will go through them in a moment. Every programme that we have at the university is made up of what is called core and elective modules. Now, the core modules are mandatory for everyone and the electives are, as the name would suggest, optional. Now, due to numbers and due to sort of resource allocation, the electives have already been chosen for this course for the upcoming academic year. They will be introduction to IT and then business IT and data analysis. Now, semester one obviously runs in semester one, that is in the winter time, all right, on the traditional academic calendar. Because this is a special running of this cert, all students here that register with us in January will take semester two first. They will do the reverse, okay? Now, first question is, is that a disadvantage? No, it is not. We have moved some things around in order to accommodate new students joining us for the first time in January. And that is where these little red lines come in. So as I mentioned, Applied Industry Project is a semester two module. You will not be taking that module this semester. That will be in the winter semester. So that will be September to December uh, 2022. Instead, you will be taking these two modules, graphic design and introduction to digital marketing. You will be taking both of those in semester one. So that then frees up some time on your timetable in semester two to accommodate applied industry project. And that is how it will work. So you will take um, introduction to digital marketing and graphic design in semester one, followed by applied industry project slash placement in semester two. Other than that, the timetable will uh, run as normal. So it will be web and app design, introduction to digital, graphic design, marketing technology landscape, social media marketing, and business IT and intro to data analysis in your semester one. Then in your semester two, you'll be taking introduction to marketing theory, data analytics and visualization, apply global digital marketing, introduction to IT apps and social media, as well as the capstone applied industry project module. So there is a little bit of moving around of the timetable, nothing much, but what that essentially boils down to in terms of what your timetable will look like for semester one is as follows. You will have classes on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and kind of on Thursdays. I'll go into this in a second. Tuesdays, six to eight, will be business IT and data analysis with Eleni and Fardos. And then you will have marketing technology landscape or MarTech with me, my colleague Jenna, from eight to 10. These classes will be delivered online through Teams, very similar to this format that we're actually in now. Then on Wednesday, you will have web app design and optimization with Andrew and Fardos and graphic design with Ashley. Now, there is a possibility that these modules will run four hours, six to 10 every second week. We have utilized this format in the past and it has been very successful because of the nature and the, uh, the practical nature of these modules. It sometimes works better that they will be four hours. So, for example, six to 10 on the Wednesday of the first week, you could have web and app design and optimization. And then six to 10 on Wednesday of the second week, you will have graphic design with Ashland. I will have final confirmation of that later this week, but I would anticipate that that would be the case. Either way, these classes, you will have live classes six to 10 every Wednesday throughout the semester. It just may be two hours and two hours, or it may be four hour blocks every second week. All right, that is just one thing that I wanted to, to mark in terms of Wednesdays. 
on Thursdays, two of my modules, Introduction to Digital Marketing and Social Media Marketing and Global PR. Both of these are delivered on demand. Both of these modules have been written and delivered in such a way in that they will be pre-recorded lectures, which will be released on a weekly basis through our online education platform, Moodle. You do, you will not have live classes every single Thursday. The idea of this was to allow a little bit more flexibility within the timetable. So you do have live classes every Tuesday and Wednesday evening, six to ten. But then every Thursday, there will be lectures released in both of these modules through Moodle that you can watch at any time that week that actually suits you. So while the timetable says six to eight, introduction to digital marketing, and then eight to 10 social media marketing in practice, it doesn't actually have to be that. They will be released on a Thursday. So if you wanted to keep to this timetable, you can absolutely do that. That is completely your prerogative. But if you wanted to maybe have a night off on a Thursday, watch on a Friday, or maybe hold off till the weekend, you can absolutely do that. So those will be available on demand. Tuesdays and Wednesdays will be live online, and then Thursdays will be on demand also online. Happy to answer any questions regarding um, timetables if you have those. So how does module delivery online actually work? So we utilize Microsoft Teams alongside, as I already mentioned, Moodle, our online education platform. Tutorials will be made available to all new registrants to familiarize yourself with Moodle. Moodle is a very sort of intuitive platform. It can sometimes look a little bit more daunting than it is, but it isn't anything to be sort of uh, scared of. It is a really sort of handy way for students and lecturers to converse with each other and to distribute um, you know, content, material, case studies, assessments, feedback, and to keep in contact. When it comes to actual live lectures, of course, this is where we utilize Microsoft 365 platforms, such as Teams, and then OneDrive as well for sort of sharing um, sharing files and then you know, sort of collaborating on different things as well. So Microsoft Teams will be the central sort of tool used uh, for live lectures. The links to those Microsoft Teams um, lectures will be made available through Moodle or through your lecturer. So we will ensure that you have access to that link, uh, obviously well in advance of the actual class starting time, just to ensure uh, that everyone is up to speed and that no one is sort of left behind. Um, we will, of course, make sure that those links are distributed well, well in time. Uh, will classes be recorded? You, uh, every lecturer is different. Okay, the university does not have a policy um, on recording lectures, as in it is not um, a university policy to actually record lectures. However, every lecturer is different. Okay, every lecturer is different. I personally, I do make recordings of my lectures available um, for the evening programs. But again, that is nothing. That is not to say that another lecturer, you know, um, wouldn't have the same policy. So again, it is not a given across the board um, that lecture recordings will be made available. However, if you are going to miss a class or you are going to go, you know, you know that you won't be available one specific evening, for example, always best to just reach out in advance if at all possible. Um, just to let the lecturer know when they can maybe flag with you what's going to be covered in that particular um, lecture session that evening so that maybe you can, you know, you can catch up um, in your own time as well. So support is always available, OK, regardless of the module format. So, for example, in both of my pre-recorded lectures, there will be um, opportunities for you to reach out and to set up, you know, sort of one to one and um, calls with me and um, most likely or most, you know, yeah, so most likely maybe on those sort of Thursday evening slots where I know, you know, you guys are registered are you know, timetabled for that specific slot with me for introduction to digital marketing, for example. So if you ever have any sort of uh, queries or any questions or would like some support on the CA or anything like that, that's why we allocate those hours in the timetable as well, just to make, you know, treat them as open office hours so that, you know, you can um, you can set up meetings. Again, your your lecturers will go into more detail on the the, the, uh, the practicalities of that, of setting up those meetings. 
Okay, so just some uh, general FAQ before we um, wrap up the information session. As I said, if you do miss a lecturer uh, due to, you know, travel, well, again, hopefully we're, you know, really heading toward the end game now in terms of travel restrictions, or if you have holiday plans or anything like that, you know you're going to be traveling, you won't be able to attend the lecture. Best thing to do is just to reach out to us and let us know, and we'll be able to point you in the direction of the module material that will be covered in that particular session. Will any lectures be held on site? Not this semester, um, not in this program. OK, not in this program. This program will be held completely online this semester. There may be the opportunity for some optional on site um, tutorial sessions throughout the semester. Those haven't been confirmed yet, uh, but there may be an opportunity for that. But anything on site will be made optional. Um, rather than mandatory all right so this will be for the per for this semester they will be online only i do not know what will happen in september we are still unsure of what the setup will be for evening programs in september i do know that if at all possible the university would like us to return to on-site teaching as much as possible however that doesn't mean that the entire program will be delivered on site it may be a blended approach. So that is just a wait and see, unfortunately. I cannot give a categorical answer to that question at this moment. I can say for sure that all classes will be delivered online this semester. I'm not sure about September. That also brings me to exams in May. Up until three days before the exams were running in January, the plan was to have them on site. And then due to the increase in the number of cases, it was decided to put them online. It would be my prediction that exams will take place on site in regular exam hall conditions in May. Again, that is just a prediction. I do not know for certain what the exam setup will be. We, of course, will be guided by, you know, the Department of Higher Education on that and, you know, by NEFIT uh, restriction or uh, recommendations and things like that. So we will be advised by government as to what format the exams are going to actually take. But it would be, again, my guess uh, that we will be heading back towards some form of normality um, in, in terms of exam assessments in May. However, we wouldn't get final word on that um, until much closer to the date. But it would just be my guess at this stage. OK, who are the main points of contact? Oh, sorry, I missed one there. What if I miss a deadline for a specific um, assessment? So in some cases, there will be opportunities for you to apply for a extension um, on certain medical grounds, etc. The best thing to do there would be to try and flag it with your lecturer as early as possible as early as possible. Deadlines are, of course, really, really strict and any late submissions will, of course, incur a penalty. But if there are, you know, extenuating circumstances, etc., best thing to do will be just to reach out to your lecturer and that can be dealt with, obviously, privately and confidentially. Who are the main points of contact within the university? So if you're ever looking for anyone's individual email address, if you know their full name, their first name and their last name, you have their email address. It is first name dot last name at tudublin.ie. All lecturing and admin staff within the university's emails follow the exact same format. You can also follow us on Instagram at TUD Marketing Advertising Digital. Um, that is, you know, regularly updated, uh, particularly over, you know, as you can imagine, maybe the last sort of couple of years or so uh, with, you know, things that have been changing really, really quickly. So any sort of important news items or announcements and things like that are usually disseminated, first of all, through Instagram. So it's usually a very, very good source of news. But of course, also, you know, your student emails are going to be a key resource for you in that in that regard as well. If you are looking for the academic calendar, looking for key term dates and other key pieces of information, you can do so through the link on screen or just by simply searching to your Dublin academic calendar and it will give you an overview of the start and end times on the semester, Easter holidays, bank holidays, when exams start and end, etc. 
And finally, what are the progression options for this program? So we have had a few instances of individuals who have completed the cert and then progressed on to the BA in digital marketing. So just to um, sort of preempt any sort of questions in that regard, if you do complete the certificate, you do have to complete the rest of the first year modules in the BA. So if you were to complete the cert, you would have to register in first year on the BA unless you can demonstrate that you would have completed modules in a past program, for example, very similar to those that we would have in the first year of the BA. Otherwise, those credits and those modules would have to be completed. However, there are a series of modules, as we've already discussed, which will be taken from both first, second and third year. For the first and second year modules in the BA, you would not have to take those again, you would get exemptions in it. So while you would have to start from first year in the BA, you would have a more sort of truncated um, first couple of years of study, you wouldn't have to complete the full suite of modules. So you may only be studying maybe one or two nights a week for the first couple of years, but you would still have to accumulate those credits in order to qualify to move from first to second, from second to third year, etc. The only exception in this regard is in third year modules. Third year modules cannot receive exemptions as it is an award year, so it must be completed in the year of award. Um, again, that is just the university policy on that, just to uh, clear up the progression options uh, following completion of the cert. Thank you very much. That brings to an end the information section of the session. Um, I am more than happy now to open up the floor to any sort of questions that you may have, and thanks a million for listening.